nanomaterials, we heard the, the introduction. Nanomaterials surround us. We actually use nanomaterials and nanotechnology every single day. Sports goods, microelectronics, uh, automotive fields, uh, biomedical devices, it's all nanomaterials. We have it and we touch it every day. Today I'm going to talk about one particular nanomaterial which was introduced to you a second ago and comes from the oldest, cheapest material you can possibly think graphite and uh, the, the name of this nanomaterial that we can derive from graphite it's graphene it's one atom thick layer of carbon so what you actually can do is if you think about graphite being made of uh, billions and billions and billions of layers of carbon then you take one only layer out of that and then you get graphene so it's uh, it's very flexible as you as you can think it's very versatile the nice thing about graphene is, their pro is its properties. It's the lightest, optical transparent. It's, uh, it's the strongest material known to man, 300 times stronger than steel. It's a wonder material. The only problem is that it's difficult to make. Now, the discovery of graphene was actually, we need, need to go back a few years, uh, two colleagues from Manchester won the Nobel Prize for discovering graphene. And they discovered it by taking a piece of graphite, what you have in your pencil sled, and took uh, scotch tape, and they took layer after layer until they found one atom thick graphene. As you can imagine, this method is not very scalable. Industry might have to struggle with that. What we found out under this ERC program was the way of producing billions and billions and billions of graphene sheets in liquid in half an hour. And we use magic solvents, how I call it. So if you manage to choose the right solvents, then they will exfoliate graphite very, very well. And now we came to the next level. We upscaled the production of graphene and we can produce one kilogram of graphene per hour. This is a huge amount of graphene if you think that is the lightest materials known to man as well. So we are taking it to the next level. But we didn't stop there. Um, in about 2010, I actually thought, well, actually, graphite is not the only layered material in nature. There are tens and tens of other classes of materials, and within each class, we have tens of materials. So it's a zoo of layered materials that we can explore and we can use. Uh, each one of these materials will have different properties because it will be made by different atoms. And now we can start playing material science with one atom thick materials, and we can pick and choose, we can play Legos, we can put one on top of the other and we can change the overall properties of the devices we make. So we adapt the properties to the final application we have in mind. We can use them in the automotive field, we can use them uh, for energy storage, we can use them uh, in biomedical uh, systems, we can use them in uh, microelectronics as well. So suddenly playing Legos with the flatlands would open new horizons. And uh, I'll show you now a, a couple of projects we have in our pocket, really, what we play with every day. We use this flatland of nanomaterials to actually produce printable electronic, electronics, uh, printable and flexible screens that would be your, your um, screens in the future. You can wrap them up and put them in your pocket. We use them to produce more efficient and more durable, flexible, ultra-thin batteries that will be able to last charge and discharge cycles up to 10,000 times. We can uh, use them for several, several applications, both in the battery side and in the supercapacitor side. We can use them to make transistors, and microelectronics has the need of shrinking down. We want things which are lighter, more portable, and so we can make transistors made of stacks of layered materials. Conducting, semiconducting, insulating, so we can play literally Lego with this flatland and obtain faster computers. Another application which is quite fun but we are exploring is using this flatland as gas barrier and that will allow us to possibly to sell beer in plastic bottles, avoiding the, the short shelf life that plastic bottle, the beer in plastic bottles has. Last but not least, we can use uh, these flatlands as thermoelectric um, devices. So we could uh, um, engage, we can store uh, the heat that is uh, wasted by engines or, or computers and produce electricity out of that in a very, very efficient way. 
So with this, I finished. I hope uh, I showed you the, the wonderland of flatlands. And my question to you is over there, where is the future of the flatland? What do you think?